Sure, I'm an education outreach specialist here at the Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies, or SIMS. Sure, global warming overall is just um, the warming of the earth and uh, the oceans, the land temperatures, primarily the lands warming up faster than the oceans, and um, the effect that has on the rest of the ecosystems and the systems of the earth working together. Um, I think one of the things that a lot of people, you know, we all know that, you know, adding CO2 and gases like that can contribute, but I think one of the most interesting things that can contribute to it is um, what's called a positive feedback mechanism, where you have uh, the warming, for example, that's already taking place, causing land um, that's currently frozen to start to melt. And there's gases in that land that have started to be released now because that land's melting, and those are still greenhouse gases. So by um, warming, we're actually causing even more warming, you know, that sort of thing. So um, it's kind of a snowball uh, effect with uh, warming. I would say global warming is a natural phenomenon that keeps us warm enough to survive on Earth so we don't freeze to death in the solar system. It's because of natural greenhouse gases, those gases in our atmosphere that trap the light and convert it to warmth like a greenhouse. But the, when people talk about global warming, the, the scary part is that those greenhouse gases have been increasing in the last 125 years due to pollution from coal burning, cars, uh, methane, and that greenhouse effect has gotten more, has gotten stronger. And that's what, and that as a result has been heating up our earth. So um, I think 
to be able to stop global warming is, is, that is, is would be really, really hard to do. Um, to definitely you know, slow it down, I think, is going to be what we can do. And that would be um, doing more efficient things like walking or riding your bike, um, driving less, no hummers, that sort of thing, you know? And I think even smaller things like, you know, going to the local farmer's market, for example. You go to the farmer's market and you get your food there and that the food's not having to be put on a ship or a plane or a truck halfway across the world to get to you, you know? So, you know, you're just riding up to your local farmer's market and getting your food. I think that's something important too. What will, war what will global warming do in the future? In the future, we'll continue to see the uh, ice in the poles start to melt, especially the North Pole. Um, the Arctic region up there, the ice will begin to melt. And um, so global warming will actually start to increase some more. I think one of the biggest impacts is going to be the rising sea level. So, which isn't actually because of the ice melting at the poles, but because as you heat any kind of substance, it expands, right? So you have the oceans and you're warming them up, so the water is going to expand and that causes sea level to rise. Um, I moved here about three years ago from Virginia Beach and that area just in the last decade has seen a lot more flooding anytime there's any kind of small coastal storm. Um, so it's a good uh, preview of what could happen in other places around the world. Final question. Yeah. Who will be affected and how will they be? I think everybody will be affected, you know, uh, whether you live in, uh, along the coast and you have uh, more coastal storms or more flooding. Um, also, I think you know, whether you live in the uh, middle parts of a country where you have more deserts and more uh, drought over time.